This is the Gamma Cruise from Electrobike. Sort of their cruiser, you know, step through, really relaxed style bike. 1500 bucks, so still what I would consider to be pretty affordable. The very average power and battery size. So we've got sort of a generic 350 watt internally geared hub motor. Pretty small, you can kind of see it's almost hidden behind that cassette. Relatively quiet, but it's geared. So there's gonna be a little bit of like a kind of a noise going on. And we've got a battery pack here that's 36 volt, like 10 amp hours. So, you know, 350 watt hours, pretty average. Should get you decent range, 15 to 30 miles, depending on whether you're using the throttle or assist. And this bike does have three levels of assist and a twist throttle. So you can kind of choose how you want to ride. Of course, assist is gonna maybe extend your range a little bit because you're helping out. But the assist sensor here is only a five magnet design, so it's a little bit delayed. You pedal, it takes a minute for it to catch up and activate. And then when you stop, I've noticed it just kind of continues for a few moments. Rather than like a torque sensor, this is actually not going to require that you push super hard. And I like that because it's not a super lightweight bike. It's like 53 pounds. It's not terrible. So I'd consider this about average. And you know, it's pretty close. Like when you can you see the saddle here, it comes down relatively far. The handlebars are swept back and there's even sort of a, an angle adjustment going on. And these stitched ergo grips. It's, it's a relatively comfortable bike. You've even got a suspension fork. Very basic zoom. There's no adjustments, no lockout just, you know, but it gives you some comfort. Pro Max suspension seat post, not a ton of travel, but still better than nothing. And the saddle is a little bit oversized. It's, it's sort of active though. It makes it fairly comfortable to pedal. It didn't feel like I was chafing my legs or anything on this bike. And then there's this little lever here. I love that. Flips up the saddle, lets you take the battery pack out. And that's great. That, that would reduce the bike like six pounds if you're needing to transport it for whatever reason. There's no quick release on the front wheel or anything, so you still might need some tools if you really wanna break this down, but that's a big help. And if you store this in the garage, you need to top the battery pack off, maybe at work or at home. If it's really cold or really hot outside, it's a good idea to kinda, you know, keep the battery aw away from those extreme temperatures. So kinda put this back down. One of my complaints about this and many of the electro bikes is you have to leave the keys in when you're riding. So I just turned it off and pulled them out. And now I can go ahead and unlock it if I can find the, the little key slot somewhere around here. There's, oh, there it is, kind of hidden. See, so the, it, you have to use a separate key to unlock the battery and actually slide it out. And that just annoys me. It's like, look at all these keys. And you need at least two to be able to unlock the battery and activate the bike. Just make it the same, same key, please. Like, it's kind of annoying. And the actual kind of on off switch over here. It's fairly out of the way, but it is in a position where if you had a dress or, you know, it's just, it it's can jingle. And this is such a nice looking frame. It comes in, um, I believe it's this white, like a, a gloss white, gloss red, and maybe like a gloss navy blue. So go America, hooray, red, white, and blue. Um, nice rack here, aluminum alloy. No light at the rear, but you do get a decent reflector. I think these are steel fenders with little rubber, kind of mud guards, nice stuff. And they, they blend in, they kind of match the fork, which is really cool. And you do get a headlight and it's integrated. So it runs off of that main battery pack. You don't have to worry about it going out. Looks like it's got five LEDs, really classy looking. Um, not bad. You can see all the cables and stuff are actually run through the frame for the most part. There is a little bit of a jumble right down here at the bottom bracket. It stays out of the way and you've got a nice chain guard. So you're not gonna get yourself all greasy when you're pedaling. So I, I like that. And even the pedals, these are very generic. Like it says, uh, Young Hua 16X or 15X. So it's, you know, whatever, it's just sort of a plastic platform. Get the job done, but you could always replace those with something a little grippier off Amazon if you wanted. Six speed drivetrain with this oversized SIS index shifter. A Little bit of a reach to get there, but it, it gets the job done. And if you wear gloves when you're riding, this is a lot easier to use than a trigger shifter and it's cheap keeps the bike at that $1,500 price point. Shimano Tourney TX derailleur back here. A little bit of an oversized gear maybe, that really big one for climbing. Um, yeah, this is at the bottom of their range, but I think sometimes the lower end components, like they're, they're kind of tough because they know like, oh, this is going on a, a bike that's it's not going to like 
a, a racing cyclist or something. It's just a generic, you know, generic derailleur. Pretty good stuff. It's still Shimano, so I like that. And then the levers here. This is like APS-C. I've never seen these before, but they have motor inhibitors, so that's great. So I mem remember I was saying it's a little bit delayed on the pedal sensor. Well, you can kill the motor instantly by pulling the brakes, and that's how it should be. It's great that they have that on this bike. The light from Electrobike did not. So, you know, not all their bikes have it, but that bike had a nicer pedal X sensor. So it's, you know, it's a trade-off, good stuff. I think we've looked at most of, most of the different features on this bike. You can see a nice two-sided kickstand there, kind of lifts the rear wheel. It might make it easier to load this rack. And this is standard size gauge um, tubing. So you could put some paneers, some of the ones that clip on nicely or a bag. There's even like a spring lock thing here, a latch, I guess. Yeah, yeah, very, very nice. Might be time to hop on this. Oh, I should say you can activate the lights right here with the push of a button. And there's this really annoying horn. Um, so that's the lights, that's the horn. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the bike on. We go up here to the on off, the LED lights come on. We're in medium. I'm gonna take it up to high for a, a ride test. And here's the horn, really kind of funny sounding and then the lights try to give you a little demo on those not bad yeah very cool that it's integrated you could add a light to the rear rack um, just get something kind of cheap one of my sort of complaints about this setup this this whole like cockpit area on the bike is that you have a more basic display it's not telling you your speed your distance your precise battery level you're just kind of getting a guess right here this is a voltage meter four dots over here four dots over here so it's like kind of redundant there we go um so you know green yellow orange red you just kind of guess like maybe i'm getting close to needing to charge it up and then cycling through those assist levels i'm going to do high for our demo and then function switches on or off assist so you can't have both like a lot of times with electric bikes you can use assist and you can override it with the throttle that's not the case here see so yeah, the throttle's not working because i'm in assist mode when if i hit function now it's throttle mode throttle only so it's it's working now i guess that's okay it's not a huge deal to separate them also the brake levers here the right lever is for the front wheel left lever is for for the rear and that's confusing to me in america it's usually the opposite uh, so for whatever reason, maybe they just brought that over, kind of a European design. Standard V-brakes, they do a decent job of stopping. They're relatively easy to tune up. I think that's a, oh, and while we're on the topic of the function button, if you're using the throttle and you're at a speed that feels comfortable to you and you wanna like give your hand a rest, you can hold function for a few seconds and it'll activate cruise control. So that's neat, that's kind of unique. Not, not a lot of electric bikes have that. So, okay, okay, I think we're good. I'm gonna hop on this thing, pedal around, find some hills, have some fun. There we go. You can see that it took a minute to start and it took a minute to stop too. So that's what I'm talking about. It's nice to have those motor inhibitors and the brake right there. I can turn it on and off as, as needed. A little bit safer that way. Ooh. Definitely feeling comfortable, a little bit more upright here. Just whoop, there we go. Yeah, the, the pedal assist, I hope they get more magnets, you know, get a 12 magnet sensor in the future because it is a little bit like kind of unexpected with the way it kicks on and off right now. I'm gonna switch over to throttle mode. I do wanna mention that this throttle is a little bit annoying because there's this plastic piece right here and it kind of I'm kind of like scraping my finger on it. Um, it'd be nice if it didn't protrude that much. So anyway, let's see. Got a little bit of a hill here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go for it. Not the best performance, um, but it's making progress. You know, you can hear it straining a little bit. Yeah, pretty much made it. A lot better than pedaling, especially a 53 pound bike. And uh, you can kind of see the power cable protruding out the side of the axle. It's not really tucked away like some of the newer bikes. So, you know, that's another area that's just a little bit cheaper. Kind of a heads up, you don't want to kick that. Or if the bike tips, 
that could end up getting bent or broken. So just uh, keep that in mind, you know? I think that's about it for an affordable cruiser style electric bike in a few different colors. It's not too bad. And the frame feels decent, but because it's this deep step through like that, if you load up the rack um, and because the motor and the battery are both towards the rear, you, you get a little bit of frame flex going on. And I, I see that on a lot of bikes. So I don't know, keep that in mind. For the full ride up with step through, uh, sort of the, the height of the bike, I mean, stand over, the length, seat tube, all those other measurements and stuff, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com and of course, ride safe.